With the Tour de France over for another year, the limelight from the world's media is lifted once more, and it's business as usual for professional cycling. Racing returns back to its birthplace of Belgium, home of cycling's most dedicated fans. The Tour de Wallonie is no exception. Taking place in the French-speaking region of Belgium, the European Tour event always gathers a strong start list, with many riders who were not part of the Tour de France using it as a springboard for the second half of the season. It's uh, an heritage that we share and, uh, and that we cherish because uh, it's the 36th edition of the Tour de Wallonie. We've just had the report from the UC Commissioner and it was a good one. Along with developing and nurturing talent, Belgium enjoys strong representation within World Tour Cycling. Nowhere is this more so than at Lotto Sudal. The Belgian registered team is fielding an all-Belgian squad at the 36th Tour de Wallonie. We're in the Tour Région Wallon, which is the southern, southern part of uh, Belgium, where they speak French. For us, as a Belgian team, it's, it's an important tour for us. The Belgian registered team have a long history within professional cycling, with the current team and structure dating back to 2003. With a strong first half of the season, Lotto are hoping to continue this success. But finding your racing legs after training camps can always be tricky, as Lotto was finding out. I think this, this race is, is the beginning of the second part of the season because most of the guys, the, the riders, they didn't do the tour, so they had a rest period. And so it's a little bit like searching how, how, how they are. It's the beginning of the second part of the season. It makes it quite hard race now to start again because when you come from altitude, you always have a bit of a condition goes down a bit after, after this training camp. And, uh, the first two days were quite hard to, uh, to get back in competition here. InCycle followed Lotto Sudal as they enjoyed a race on home soil. It may not be a World Tour event, but the crowds and atmosphere could fool you. As you know, Belgians are fond of cycling and you know, when you have such an affiche with uh, big team leaders, big teams, it's really important for the public, for the crowd, because you see that alongside the roads. It's always nice to race in Belgium. And like today we passed my training roads actually, where I come often on training and uh, yeah, you see some fans on the road that uh, I often see. Home support is certainly on their side. Lotto have a strong team with intimate knowledge of the routes they'll be taking. But with their focus on other races in the calendar, Lotto are happy to take each day as it comes. I think Jürgen Roland is also good, but it's... it's, it's... His objective, main objective, is uh, the Eneco Tour, which is coming later, is also a Belgian race, so he's preparing the Eneco Tour with this race. The last five years I did the Tour de France, but uh, I skipped it this year to be uh, good at the one-day classics in, uh, in the end of the season. Over the race, Belgian riders displayed why they're a force to be reckoned with in the world of cycling. Philippe Gelbert and Jonas van Genechten each claiming a stage. But it was their Dutch rivals who came out on top, as Danny van Poppel bagged two stage wins, whilst Terpstra retained the yellow jersey from day one and would hold on to it till the finish. The tally is reset once more, and the Belgian fans wait patiently for a Belgian winner on home soil. If I could choose between a stage in Tour de France or a classic, I will always say a classic because I grew up with it. My, it uh, there are my training roads, so... Uh, and I think uh, also the kids see it like this.